Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for video number four in my series One Flower Eight Ways. Today I'm going to be coloring my flower with Peerless Watercolors. I'll show you really quickly first how I store them. I have this nice folder that I got from Staples that my daughter colored for me. And inside I have all the pieces of the cardstock. It's actually Peerless Watercolors come on a piece of cardstock, so it's very intense color that you'll pull up with water. So I've cut a piece, labeled it, and then I also watercolored off to the side a little bit so I could see what color it is because oftentimes it's not at all like the color of the cardstock itself. Um, I adhered these little palettes with Tombow Mono Multi Glue, which you can stick to again and again. So once I'm done with it, I just put it back. If I want it, I just pull it right off and it sticks. So these pages are separated by plastic sleeves, so if I get the palette wet, it won't contaminate the one on the other side. So I'm gonna be pulling a couple of uh, yellows and a couple of greens and we'll get started. Okay, I've stamped my alternate flower on some Strathmore watercolor paper and I've heat embossed my flower and that always helps the watercolor stay in the lines. Uh, I've picked two colors, I've got gamboge yellow and orange yellow pretty bright orange and a pretty bright yellow. I'm going to be coloring with an aqua painter. You could also use a brush and some water, but I just feel like I get a little bit more control with my aqua painter. Uh, this one is a Stampin' Up! one. It's the smaller of the two that comes in the set. I also have a Ranger detailer brush that I like to use a lot, but I feel like this gets a little bit more control of the water. So uh, there's lots of different ways to color with watercolor. I'm just going to show you what I do to get the same effect of the other ones that I've done, I'll just show you one of them really quick. Here's the one with the Copic markers. So I'm trying to achieve a similar look. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna wet the petal just to provide a little bit of water on the cardstock uh, because when these dry, they're permanent. So you don't want it to dry too soon. This will provide moisture for the color when it first goes on. And then I'm gonna pick it up directly from the palette and I'm actually going to color the whole thing yellow all the way. And then I'm just going to move on to the next one. I know I've already got yellow on my brush and this might actually be enough. So this kind of shows you how intense this color is because I just colored two petals. Uh, I'm going to go to the third one and I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to pick up more color as I need it to, as I need it to drop it in. And I'm not too worried about shading at this point. I just want to get a layer of my lightest color. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and finish all this yellow. All right, now I'm done coloring my yellow. You may have noticed that I colored some of the petals multiple times and that was just because I wanted a darker color. Um, I'm gonna wait and let this dry for a minute before I start dropping in my orange. The reason being is that if you start putting such a very vibrant orange into this yellow, it's gonna spread quickly, especially if there's a lot of water on there, and then the orange will overtake the yellow. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna let it dry for a minute and then we can start on the orange. All right, now that that's had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go in with my orange. I've got my same aqua painter and I'm also gonna use a tissue. So I've got this off to the side and what I'm gonna do is wipe off the color whenever I need to start with fresh water. So I'm gonna do this one petal at a time. I'm gonna wet it up again. So you'll notice that when I, when I put water on it, it's really not affecting the yellow because the color is permanent once it dries. But I wanna moisten it up so that my uh, orange goes on nice and smooth and I don't get any water stains. So I'm just gonna wipe off just in case I got a little yellow. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit and just make sure that I've got a nice good flow of water. And I'm gonna tap it in my orange. I don't want too much on here. It's better to start with less. See, I'm looking at this and it looks like there's a lot on here. So I'm just gonna dab it a little bit on my tissue and you can see how vibrant that is. I'm gonna go back in here and it, look, it almost took it all off. So I'm gonna go back and get some more. And I'm going to start at the bottom. You can see where I've got my shadow. I'm going to work it up and I'm going to be really careful, wiping it constantly so that I blend it out toward the yellow, but I don't cover all the yellow with my orange. So I'm going to go back in here, add some shadow there, color it up to the tip, 
I'm gonna put a shadow behind this thing, this little stemish looking thing. And, uh, and so when I feel like I've got enough orange, actually, let me just add a little bit in this crease right here. Okay. Now when I feel like I've got enough orange, I'm gonna wipe it off. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's blending into the yellow. So I kind of started in the yellow and I'm moving toward the orange to make sure I get a nice, pretty smooth blend. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that and I can always go back and add more color, which is what I love about these colors. So let's, let's do another one. In fact, I might actually go back and add more orange, but I'm gonna let it dry. And this time, I'm not gonna put water over the petal. I'm gonna experiment a little bit here so you can see the difference. So I'm gonna go directly to the petal with orange. So I'm gonna start at the bottom in my shadow area. I'm gonna work my way up. I'm gonna add a little bit to this top crease, right, just on one side of it. I'm gonna add some orange to this where it's the uh, petal is folded over. And then I'll add a little bit to where it curls because you'll see a little shadow there, okay? And I'm making sure that I'm keeping all this wet. So I'm kind of going over it a few times. All right, once I've got that down, I'm gonna quickly take it off my brush and move from yellow to orange. And I think it, this one's a little harder to do to control the color than when you uh, wet the whole thing first because I'm kind of fearful that I'm going to get water stains because if they if it dries quickly, you'll get water stains. It actually looks pretty good. I like that one a lot. So let's go back and add a little bit more orange to this one just to see what a second layer of orange would look like. So this is dry. and I'm going to add a little bit to the edge all the way to the toward the bottom here. I'm just going to go back to my palette whenever I run out of orange and then I'll wipe off my orange and start in my yellow and move to the orange. And once I get there, I'm gonna stop and wipe my brush. Because I don't ever wanna move from orange to yellow because the orange is so vibrant that when I pull it to the yellow, it's gonna just overpower that yellow. So I like the way that looks. So you could do it either this way where you have two layers, or you could do it this way, which is a little riskier with uh, one layer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this next one. And this time I'm gonna do what I did the first time, which is wet the whole thing. And then I'll go back and get a little bit of orange and put it at the bottom. Now, you don't want too much water on your brush because if you get too much water with this orange that I'm applying here, it's going to spread immediately into your yellow. So you wanna keep your brush fairly dry because you've already put water on the cardstock, so you don't need a lot of water on your brush. And a little bit on this crease because there's gonna be a little shadow there with where my petal kind of goes around dry the brush and I'm going to start in the yellow and I'm going to move to the orange until I get a nice pretty blend. Wipe back to the yellow, move to the orange, wipe yellow to orange, wipe yellow to orange. There you go. Okay so I'm going to finish these. I'm going to fast forward it but I'll keep it all in okay. I just wanna stop this for a second. My brush started getting a little um, pointy, like lots of bristles separating, and that just means it's getting a little dry. So what I do is I kind of push, I took it off camera actually, but I uh, squeezed the barrel and then more came out, but you wanna kinda of let it run a little bit and make sure it's got a nice even flow before you put it back to your cardstock. Okay, you probably noticed that I did multiple layers more down here because um, the, the area is a lot smaller and when I put the orange in, it's gonna cover the whole thing pretty quickly. So um, now with these, I really like the way it turned out. This one, actually, I wish I would have had a little bit more yellow. I wasn't cleaning my brush as thoroughly as I should have, so more of my orange went into the yellow. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to try to make the orange a little bit darker and that will make my yellow look a little bit brighter. So I'm going to add a couple of accents here at the bottom and in the crease. Notice I'm putting it on dry cardstock because I'm just putting a little bit, thoroughly dry, and then I'll go back and blend that a little bit. And you always want to constantly be taking color off your brush. And I like the way that turned out, so I'm going to add a little bit more to this one. And then at the bottom here. And if you add just a tiny little bit, you almost don't even need to blend it. It's just more of a highlight to make it pop. And this blend, I'm um, sorry, this aqua painter has a very, very fine tip so you can drop a tiny little bit of color for accents. So I'm just going to go in and just add some of this bright orange in strategic areas where my darkest shadow is. and in the crease here. Kind of what I did with the Copic markers where I added that dark, dark orange just in, very th in a very thin layer at the edge. You just kind of have to work on it until you get it the way you like it. All right, so I think that's good. I'm gonna leave that like it is and I'll start working on my greens. Okay, I'm ready for green. I'm gonna use grass green and dark green. I'm gonna use the same exact uh, technique I did on the flower which is just cover the whole thing with green. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna wet the flower first, or the stem here first, and then I'll drop in my color. I can see there's a little tint of orange, so I must have hit it or I still had some on my brush. This orange is really, really bright. So let's see, I wanna go grass green, which is my lighter green. And if you want it to be really light, which I actually do, so I'm gonna squeeze this and get some more water out and less color. So when you have less color, more water, you're gonna get a much lighter version of the color. So you can see how light that is. I could add more by dropping some in. And you can just do this at a, little bit at a little bit at a time, and that's kind of my biggest tip for you, is to just slowly work these colors in. Uh, you can always add more, but it's harder to take it away. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish coloring these. I'll fast forward. Okay, I'm done coloring all my light green. You may have noticed that I was still getting that orange tint and I was trying to figure out why, but I think it's because I was wiping off in the orange of my tissue. And so I was getting a little bit of that on my brush. So that just goes to show you how vibrant these colors are and how intense the color pigment is. So let's let that dry for just a second and I will be back to finish the dark areas. Okay, I've let that dry, so let's go ahead and add in the darker color. I'm gonna use the dark green this time. Just kind of test the water on my brush to make sure it's flowing out nicely. I'm going to color the whole thing. And notice that it doesn't really change the color that's already there. Pick up some of this dark green and I'm going to put it at the base. Kind of brush it upward. You can see how dark this is. It's really crazy how dark this is. Um, so I'm going to pull up, not all the way. And it does seem a little bit dry to me but that's okay, I'd rather have it a little bit drier than, than too wet. Okay, so once I have that dark color put on there, I'm gonna take it off my brush, and then I'm gonna start in my uh, light green area and I'm gonna push down into the dark. Once I hit the dark, I'm gonna wipe my brush again. Same thing as I did, and I do wanna pull a little bit out because it's kind of light up there, so I'll pull a little bit of it out. You can always pull out, but it's hard to put back, okay? wipe and then go back in and blend a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. So I'm going to start in this blank or very light green area. Go down here and I can pull out a little bit as much as I want. Once I've pulled out as much as I want to pull out, I will stop, wipe, and then just blend a little bit more so that it doesn't leave a line. Back to the top and do, going down this other side, pull up a little bit. I like the way that looks. That looks really good. Actually, I think it's a little bit too light here because I don't have as much light. I want to balance the light on my flowers with the light on my uh, on my green here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this grass green. I'm going to test it a little. It's pretty, pretty darn bright. And I'll drop it in. There we go. So I just want a little bit of a darker green in this area. And you can always go down here and pull up. There, I think this looks better. If my yellow had been a little bit brighter, then I really would have liked that, that kind of whitish green look. So you can see the, the shadowing you get it looks really pretty once you add that second layer. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these areas right here. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to work on these leaves down here. I'm going to do the same exact thing as I've done in my other videos as far as where to put the shading. Color the whole thing. And then I'm going to grab some dark green and put it in the same dark areas as I've been putting it. This is going on pretty dry, but I'm more confident when it goes on dry that it's not going to spread too much. I am going to squeeze my barrel a little bit. So you get my neck, get a nice water flow, and then pick up. So you can see I've got more water now, and it's going to dilute the color a little bit more too. But you can always wipe the water off and get more color. I'm also going to put dark around this stem that kind of folds in and then up these lines. With watercolor, it's a lot harder than when you're working with a marker with a fine tip, for example, uh, because you can be pretty precise, but the water sometimes is not very forgiving and it just sort of spreads and does whatever it wants. So that's why generally watercolor has a watercolor look to it instead of a very fine kind of shaded look to it. So I'm just gonna blend these out I think I'm going to have to add another layer to make that a little bit darker. Just definitely don't want to get any water lines, so I'm trying to move a little bit faster. Smooth out those edges on each of these lines here. You can see I do have a little bit of a water line right here in this area. So I'm going to try to blend that out. And if it's not all the way dry, it will blend out. And when you add water, it's going to, and it's, you know, and it's not already permanent, it'll spread it out a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit of the dark to this piece. And then wipe my brush and blend that out toward the top. Actually, I like the way it turned out here. This one, though, is a little bit darker at the bottom. So I'm going to try to add a little bit more of this dark green, just a little bit to the edge, to the center edge right here, just to make it pop a little bit, maybe go up some of these lines. And then I'll blend that out. And once I get down to that green area, I don't want to put too much water because that's what's going to dilute it and make it lighter. So I kind of want to push it down to that center area. And then I'm going to add a little bit extra over here on the side. Kind of like with the uh, Inktense pencils where I had that really dark line down here and I kind of like the way it turned out that way. And then I'm just going to blend it a little bit more. There you go. You could go on and on and on with the watercolor until you think it's absolutely perfect. Um, but it'll never be perfect, so you just have to kind of stop at some point. Okay, let me do this other leaf right here. I'm going to do the bottom one, bottom part dark, and right above the crease. And I'm not going to be too particular about this one because it is very, very small, so it's hard to get some good dimension on it. I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to add a couple of little dots here. 
Again, it's being a little picky with this, these little tiny areas and it's hard to do. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And then for my stem, I'm just going to add, I've already colored it light green. So I'm just going to add a little bit of dark. You have to be careful. It's a very thin line that you, that you have space for here. So I'm just going to focus my thin line on the left edge and let the right edge be the light area. And I'm going to try to use as little water as possible so it doesn't spread. And if it's more of a line on the on the uh, stem, that's fine because you want that sort of linear look where it rolls around the edge. Oops, sorry. All right, this I'm gonna just do like the bottom right here. And then down at the base, I'm gonna get a shadow and then it'll kind of come out a little bit. I'm gonna blend that out. Same thing on this one. I'm gonna add a little dot right there and then I'll wipe that off and blend it around the curve. And then finally, oh no, I forgot this one. Just a little bit of dark right there where the stem kind of rolls downward. And then behind here where there's gonna be a little shadow from my petals. I'll wipe that and blend it a little. And then finally, these little things right here, I'm just gonna grab a tiny little bit of the dark green and put it at the base. Not enough, there we go. And then one over here. And then I'm gonna wipe it and just blend that line so I don't have a line. There we go, okay. One more little thing. Okay, I think that came out really pretty. I like these colors. Um, it's a little harder to do. This is definitely a little harder to do than the markers I've been using in the colored pencils. So let me just show you how they compare. So here's the one we just did. This is Peerless. We have dry intense pencils. We have wet intense pencils. Get them all on camera here. And then these are the Copic markers. So you can kind of pause this if you want to and take a closer look. I'll have photos so you can get um, a zoom in on it. But uh, every one of them looks really pretty. Uh, a little, some of them are a little bit have more depth than others. I think the intense pencils. I know I'm watching this in person, so I can kind of get a better look at these. But the ink tents aren't as vibrant as either of these. But definitely the Copic markers are the most vibrant. So the most, the the widest range between dark and light. Um, anyway, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next video.